Thank you, Governor. Wow, what a, what a wonderful surprise to have a message from our President-elect of the United States, Barack Obama. And that's going to be a really tough act to follow. But <laughs> now, as a Sisters of the Planet ambassador for Oxfam America, whose mission it is to bring greater awareness of the impacts of climate change on impoverished communities and the plight of women around the world, it is my pleasure to introduce Vice President for Policy and Communications of Oxfam America, Mr. Jim Lyons. Well, good morning to all of you. Thank you, Linda. I'm sorry, we're sitting in the back saying to ourselves, wow, what a difference an election can make. Uh, I want to thank Governor Schwarzenegger for the opportunity to participate in this conference and to help put a human face on climate change. Oxfam works in more than 120 countries around the world, and with increasing frequency, our staff and partners are reporting the disastrous consequences of an increase in global temperatures. While most of the world is focused on the environmental consequences of climate change, it is dealing with the impacts of global warming on people that is really most urgent. Although least responsible for climate change, it is the world's poorest populations who are the most vulnerable and who are most likely to bear the brunt of the impacts. From extended droughts in Africa to flooding in South Asia to melting glaciers in Peru, climate change is threatening the lives and livelihoods of poor people around the globe right now. We are confronted with an enormous challenge. We must help people adapt to the new climate reality by building climate resilience, while at the same time working to reduce the prospects of further damage and destruction by reducing our own greenhouse gas emissions. We can and we must do both. Investing in clean energy technologies, improving energy efficiency, finding ways to capture and store carbon, curbing forest loss, and reducing the risks of future disasters can produce new green jobs here in the United States and open new global markets to help steer developing countries on a more sustainable, low-carbon, climate-resilient pathway. And obviously, with the leadership of Governor Schwarzenegger, the governors who are co-hosting this event, and with that of President-elect Obama, we are very optimistic about the future. To reinforce what is at stake, I would like to present a short video clip this morning from a project we call Sisters on the Planet. Sisters on the Planet highlights how poor communities are affected by global warming and how women and children are hardest hit. You will note, however, that the women in this film clip have chosen not to be the victims of climate change but instead to fight for a better planet. And I hope that after seeing this, they will be able to count on you to join in their fight as well. Now, I want to extend special thanks to Kansas Governor Sebelius and to California EPA Secretary Linda Adams, two of our Sisters on the Planet ambassadors, for their support for this project. And again, thank you, Governor Schwarzenegger and all the governors co-hosting this event for showing the way and for helping to convene this body of global experts to help seek solutions to the global climate crisis. Now on to Sisters on the Planet. Climate change is real. Its impacts are not unique to remote areas of Uganda. They are worldwide. 
O que, que nós estamos introduzindo de diferente com as mudanças climáticas? As mudanças climáticas trazem um maior número de catástrofes, de eventos catastróficos, de picos de temperatura, de picos de tempestades, chuvas ou secas com maior frequência. O que nós estamos fazendo ao acabar com os ecossistemas e ao acabar com a diversidade cultural é acabar também com a nossa capacidade de resiliência, com a nossa capacidade de absorver mudanças como sociedade humana e como ecossistemas. Right now, the effects of extreme changes in weather are being felt most in poor communities. This is because poor people rely more on natural resources, are more vulnerable to disaster and have fewer ways to protect themselves. Climate change affects everybody, but women around the world are suffering the greatest impact. In many countries, it is the women who grow the family's food, collect fuel and water, and bring up the children. The effects of climate change can create life-altering events for these women and their families. This is where my house was before Katrina. This is where I lived and enjoyed and had family dinners every Sunday, gatherings with my friends, surprise birthday parties for my brothers and sisters. This was the house. In poor communities around the world, those already hit hard by climate change, women are no longer waiting. They are taking action. They are finding solutions. <laughs> Sahina, Martina, Muriel and Sharon are leading efforts in their communities to overcome the effects of the climate crisis. Their efforts are changing the world, but they can't do it alone. Now it's up to all of us to face up to the effects of climate change here and abroad. After all, we are all in this together, which means we are all part of the solution. Help Oxfam America spread the word about the impact of climate change on women around the world. Urge the U.S. government to help poor people adapt to the changing environment. And go online and sign the Sisters on the Planet pledge today. Please welcome Dr. Tom Kessinger, Vice Chairman of the Aga Khan Development Network and General Manager of the Aga Khan Foundation. That was a very lovely and telling video, so let's a little more applause for that, please. <laughs> Governor Schwarzenegger, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would begin by expressing His Highness the Aga Khan's thanks to, to you, Governor, for your invitation to participate in this summit when he visited California earlier in the year. His visit to California was part of the worldwide celebration of his 50th year as imam of the Shia Ismaili Muslims by his followers in the United States and around the globe. That celebration is in its uh, final weeks and he is therefore unable to attend this session today. But he requested me 
to convey his greetings to all of the participants and his best wishes for the success of this very timely event. The Aga Khan Development Network is a sponsor to the summit because it shares the concern for the quality of life of all the peoples of the world in our lifetimes and into the future. It also shares the sense uh, that the need to identify and implement specific concrete actions at the local, regional, national, and global levels that can be expanded or launched is urgent. Climate change is a global process and will impact all parts of the world. But as in most things, its effects are uneven. The consequences will vary by the location and natural endowments of individual nations and the large differences in their wealth, natural and man-made resources, and scientific and institutional capacities. The Aga Khan Development Networks are concentrated in Central and South Asia and in a number of countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. All of them are engaged in efforts to improve the quality of life for their inhabitants. Although the pro progress has been achieved, in most of them, substantial parts of the population still live below the poverty line and remain dependent on fragile and, in many cases, degraded forest, land, and water resources for their survival. Life is a struggle in these poor, isolated communities, even in the better years, and quite precarious because of shrinking glaciers in the case of Asia and South America, and quite surprisingly, both droughts and floods in Asia and Africa. To make matters worse, many of these regions are also characterized by high seismic risk and suffer from major disasters such as the world has witnessed in the last few years, including the Southeast Asian tsunami and earthquakes in South Asia and China. For our part, the Aga Khan Development Network will join in the scientific effort to document and understand change by collecting and sharing data on areas in which it operates. By continuing to work on mitigating the effects of change that are already apparent, expanding its efforts to find sustainable solutions for rural energy supply, and strengthen its work on disaster preparedness in remote communities, some of which I think were well il illustrated in the Oxfam video. In doing so, it is seeking partners here in the United States and elsewhere that can share scientific knowledge, tech, uh, technology, and practical experience that will support these efforts. Thank you for this opportunity to present our perspective and to share in your deliberations, and I wish you well over the rest of these next two days. Thank you.